Hey everyone, it's Dr. Andrew Orr here. Uh, yesterday I put up a post about who can help me when I need help. And it's quite interesting because it's something that we always talk about and people, it's always a bit of a mixed reaction when we talk about things. And recently we've been talking about the dangers of Dr. Google, right? Um, obviously, as we've talked about, you know, there are positives in searching. <laughs> Um, versus researching, because researching is a whole different area. So we talk about searches, not research, um, because generally the general public can't get a hold of what we call uh, proper research or peer reviewed journals and things like that, which then leads them to have things that are, you know, 10 years old or more. But the other thing is that <clears throat> we need to be really, really, really clear on um, when I go to fix my car, I don't try and fix it myself because as much as I do have some experience um, with mechanics and being brought up around cars and how to, how to look over cars and things like that, there's a whole different, it's, it's different these days. You know, cars have changed, there's, there's new things, there's electronics, and it's not like the old cars and that. But even then, I'm not a mechanic. The same goes for anything in life, really. So if you were traveling overseas and you wanted to plan a holiday, probably the best way to do it is sit down with a travel agent and map out a holiday. And, you know, if you're not sure of an area, then you can organize a tour where you have tour guides that will guide you through um, certain areas and they know the locals, they lo know local knowledge and they know things back to front. They know everything about where they are. And yeah, sure, there's perils to that as well. Um, and sure, you could sit down on your own and try and figure it all out. And you might end up in the back block somewhere and you might end up lost, you might end up ripped off, or you could be taken hostage somewhere. <laughs> that's the reality, right? And that's true. Um, there are some parts of the world that are quite dangerous and um, without local knowledge, you don't know. Um, the same goes for anything else, Where, wherever you're going, you're going to go and buy a house. Do you just go out on your own and look for the house or do you get a real estate agent who will take you around, show you where all the best picks of the houses are. Um, if they're a good real estate, they'll be honest and upfront with you about things that are wrong with the house. Um, then if you need to really go over it, you go and find a, um, a building and a building in pest inspector, someone that can come around, have a look at the structure of the house for you before you sign up for that house, right? The same goes for healthcare. And this is where we see a lot of the problems start. Now, I don't want people getting all uppity about it or anything like that. I understand 100% understand that people have had the raw end of the deal in some situations, some, and it's not all. We can't say that all of you've had the, because the reality is that some people are their own worst enemies and that's what some people don't see as well. But I'll 100% acknowledge that some people, and I know because I get really upset about it because people come and see me and I see, have to sit down and sift through things that they've had missed and dismissed now, before anyone gets uppity about it, it happens on all sides of medicine. It happens on the Western medicine side of things, on the scientific side, and it happens on complementary medicine. It does. And it's probably more likely to happen on some of the natural medicine sides because then a lot of them don't have postgraduate training. And that is truth, 100% truth. That's not saying that there's not good people on that side as well, but that's the truth. But just having medical training doesn't make you good either. There's, there's bad medical practitioners, 100%. There's bad specialists. But then again, there's bad mechanics. There's bad real estate agents. There's bad in every, every part of what we'll deal with in life. And we have to deal with that on some way, shape or form. And hopefully what we do through our lives, we find recommendations of people. Now, sometimes those recommendations are gold and sometimes those recommendations are, I'm sorry, it's a big pile of 
do do um, because those people's reference points are just their reference. So what one person might think is good, the other might, person might think is absolutely crap. And that's the problem. Being nice to someone doesn't mean make you good. <laughs> and we see that happen. Um, similarly, sometimes the, the worst bedside manner people I've ever seen are actually brilliant physicians, but you wouldn't want to deal with them because they're closed off. They don't want to hear about anything else but their opinion and they miss things too. But then there are some that are technically brilliant if you're going to have surgery with them. Sorry, but you're under the knife. They're not talking to you. They're going to do a brilliant job and they're going to get the job done. That's the truth. And we see that a lot too, um, more so with surgery. <laughs> but the other thing is, like I say to people, is where do we find these experts? And that's one area that I've um, trying to create um, um, an, an area in because I've set up a program called the Experts Program where we're screening people, um, these professionals, and they are experts. And if they haven't got adequate training, then we're training them up and getting them up to the level where they should be. And that's how it should be. And then we're also setting standards with our peers and those peers will then review that and make sure that that person's up to a standard or they don't become part of the experts program, even though they've had the training. Um, it's about getting them time and time again. And that's the one thing we're trying to do at the moment. But I know when people come to see me, I always say, you know, when people come to see me, it's about a thorough diagnosis and a thoroughly going over the case. And that's why my motto is no stone left unturned because I spend the time, a lot of time making sure paperwork and people often don't understand. They go, why can't I just turn up? I do that at every other place. And I go, yeah, how's that working for you? It doesn't work. So it's about someone spending time. So I spend an hour, an hour, you know, half an hour to an hour prior going over, well, it's about an hour all up going over their paperwork prior to them coming in. And then I'll have to write up reports. So there you go. There's at least, you know, an hour and a bit um, writing up their reports, going over all their case, looking at everything thoroughly. And that's what should happen, right? Same within law or anywhere else. They should get your case, have a look over and see what they're going to do with it. Um, and that's what I do before anyone even steps foot in my door. They have to fill out about five different papers of comprehensive questionnaires their health history, send in all their medical report, everything like that, and look at it and go, this is this person, what's going on? And there's key things that I'll look for and I'm trying to look for because of my training. Um, and having that training in, in both sides of medicine um, gives me that, that uh, um, ability to look at things very, very, very thoroughly where some people can't because they're, that's just their qualifications, that's it. Um, so that's what I do. And then, so when they come in, we already know what the, the issues, then we go over it. This is what, what I've found. This is this, 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 this is how we're going to treat it, set out a treatment plan. And by the way, these are the areas that I'm going to help you with. And I can't help you with some areas. And that's just the understanding is that not everyone can do everything. And when we look at areas like endometriosis, and things like policies to go or fertility, they're multifaceted, right? You're gonna need a few people in your team. And I say it's about finding your team, right? So finding that team can be hard if you're doing it for yourself. So that's what I do. I have my own network, my own referral network, like a symbiotic network that I refer to and will only use. And I know that we all have each other's back 100%. We're all on the same page and we're all working for the benefit of the patient. And then sometimes I will have to work outside my network and that's where it becomes hard. So that's why I've set up the experts program so we can try and have more and more people we work with. But sometimes we have to work outside that. Now, as you as a general public trying to go on and get stuff done, it can be often quite hard. There's two things with it. One, what I see is that some people don't know what to ask for. Um, some people have multiple things going on. So they'll end up at the emergency department, like I've said before, and they're in pain and they expect to be fixed. Problem is emergency department departments aren't there to fix you. They're there to get you out of pain and basically send you home if you can. If you need to stay in, they'll put you in. 
Um, if they need to operate on you, they'll try and operate on you. If it's an emergency, they will. If not, they'll refer you to a different department in the hospital. But sometimes the breakdown in the chain of command and whoever's on and all that happens, right? And then people get lost in the system. We know that happens. The other part is sometimes we there's a huge difference between public and private. There is. Unfortunately, there is. I'm, I'm not going to beat around the bush. Yes, we in Australia, we have a great public system. It's not damning that side of things either. But when it comes to gynecological, women's health and a lot of that, there is a lot of substandard care. There really is. Unfortunately, because when you go in, it's not that even if it's substandard care, it's it's that a lot of the people working on you are trainees, right? They are, they're trainees, trainee surgeons and all kinds of stuff and registrars and all that because they've got to learn somewhere, right? And if you're in a public system, you're at the mercy of that. You have to just get what you're given. There aren't the, the top-notch people in there because the top-notch people are out there working in the, in the private sector. It's hard because at the end of the day where there's not a lot of government, like for even for myself, I don't get a government assistance to help people. I have to charge people a fee. No one gives me free benefits. No one pays for my rent. No one pays for my insurance. I have to do that. So I have to charge a fee. It's not free. Um, so that's what people think, oh, but shouldn't it be free? No, healthcare isn't free. When we'll, whichever way you want to look at it, it's not free. Someone has to pay for it. Is it fair that some of these things don't happen? No, it's not. There should be better ways to keep good surgeons in systems and things like that and good people in the systems, but it isn't. There's a huge breakdown. So people leave and go stuff this. I'm going to go and work for myself in private practice because they're flogging me here. I'm not getting paid for it. And, you know, I can go out there and help people in another way. And they do. And yeah, and I feel sorry for people that are stuck by their demographics, their financial situation and that. I understand that completely. Um, and people say, oh, but you don't understand. No, I do understand. Um, I haven't always been in this position. I've come from, you know, a, a back, you know, I don't have to go into my background, but we've all started at the bottom and worked our way up. <laughs> so um, when people say that, I go, well, actually, you don't know what you're talking about there. I haven't always been you know, being where I am and blah, blah, blah. Um, and yes, I do know what it's like to uh, try and rub two cents together. Um, so yeah, without going into the backstory of it, I shouldn't have to explain that. So when people project that, I shut them down quite quickly. But at the same time, I understand where they're coming from. It's hard when you don't have money and you don't have a voice and things like that. So that makes it hard. But also, it doesn't matter whether you're in the private system too, sometimes you'll see people in the private system and they'll only be able to help you to a point. Same in the public system. So what do you do from there, right? Who's going to help you from there? So that's why I do what I do, because not only I know where my scope of practice is, but if it's outside my scope, like I need a psychiatrist, you know, like a psychiatrist, I might need a psychologist. I might need a pelvic floor physiotherapist. I might need a surgeon. Well, I can work with my group of people. And if I can't, say it's someone outside somewhere, say it was overseas, what I can do is then advocate for that person and say, hey, this is my patient. I'm referring this person to you. I need you to look after them 100%. And I'm going to be sitting here the whole way with them. I'm still going to be holding their hand and in control of their treatments and you need to do X, Y, Z. And I'll be watching you. If you don't do X, Y, Z, I'll just take them somewhere else because I'm here to hold their hand every step of the way. And so that's what it's about. If you find a good practitioner, even if they can't help you, they can hold your hand and advocate for you because if I ring up and say, I need X, Y, Z, it usually gets done. There's a there's a little bit of a assist and it's about talking the talk, walking the walk and all that and knowing what to say, where the general public doesn't know that. This also gets back to, I know when people call up here, they can be actually quite rude and aggressive to my staff. And we're actually here trying to help them. But what they're doing is projecting the last person they saw onto us, like everyone's like that. And if you do that, you're not gonna get very far. 
often I can see through that and people are sitting there like this in my mirror, blah, 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 you know, doctors, blah, 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 you know, they're all the same, blah, blah, what are you going to do for me? And I'll have to sit there and go, well, yes, I understand you've had a hard time. Um, understand where you're coming from. Really, really bad. It's not going to happen here. But if you want my help, you're going to have to down that attitude a little bit because if you don't down that attitude, no one's going to help you. And you're just lucky that I'm here that can see through all that and understand it's all a bit of a front and where you've come from, but you need to settle down a bit. And then usually when you break that ice and it breaks down. But at the same time, I also see that some people are their own worst enemies and I've gone through stuff with them and they go, oh, but so-and-so hasn't worked and this hasn't worked and that hasn't worked. And I go, but you actually didn't do the treatment. Oh, yes. I, and I go, no, you did it for, you know, a, a tiny amount of time. You've been inconsistent. You have to be honest with yourself. You didn't do the right treatment. And then go over that and say, look, what we're going to do now, we're going to circle back around because some of the treatments and recommendations were actually right. You just didn't follow them. And it's then consolidating it. So this time when they do it or they you know, they go and see one of my colleagues and they do stuff that's been recommended. I'll be also writing to the colleagues going, this is what I've found, X, Y, Z, this is what they need to do. This is what their treatment plan is. This is what they'll be doing and advocate for them. And then they'll be doing exactly the same thing what they should have done previously. And this time it's gonna work, right? Um, because you've got someone on them and checking them in. And I'll say, right, I need to see you in a fortnight's time or a week's time. And we're gonna go back over this, see how you're going. Going to make sure you're doing X, Y, Z diet, lifestyle changes, blah, blah, blah. Um, seeing the surgeon, make sure you take your medications, all that kind of stuff. Yes, you need surgery. Yep, you need to go and see the counsellor and coordinate the whole lot. So I become the conductor and become the coordinator as well. And they're to a guide. <laughs> so that's what it's about and finding. And there are people like out that out there, but finding them is really, really hard. So again, this is why we're setting up the experts program so that people will have those people and we can, those people are all got a set protocol to follow. So that's how I often work that sometimes, yes, I'm their healthcare practitioner, but yes, I'm their conductor. Yes, I'm their best friend. I'm walking side by side with them. And yes, sometimes they have to stand there with a big stick and whack the stick out at someone trying to walk over them. Or <laughs> naughty, you're being naughty as well. Pull your head in. Um, and it's about coordinate. So I become the coordinator. And that's the way it should be. And I tell people that sometimes where you are, you don't have that stuff. And But maybe we have to work within your system, but I'll help you work within that system and I'll call your GP or I'll call your local specialist or I'll call your local hospital and make sure that X, Y, Z done, as C, you know, X, Y, Z is done because <clears throat> it gets done differently when it's, oh, hello, it's Mrs. X, Y, Z here to, oh, hello, it's Dr. Andrew Orr here. Um, I've got a patient that I'm referring over and they need X, Y, Z done. And I'm trying to find someone to help me do it because they're, you know, they can't find anyone locally. And can we please have this? These are my recommendations. Can you follow these recommendations? Can I talk to your head specialist or can I talk to someone in charge? You get a whole different outcome. So this is what we're trying to get through to people is that you sitting at home trying to manage yourself, one, isn't managing yourself. You're just popping pills and pain stuff. Dropping painkillers isn't fixing your problem. It's not do it's addressing your pain. That's all it's doing. And there's a lot of side effects. There's, um, you can become addicted. There's opioid addictions and stuff like that. It's not saying that you don't need them, but a lot of those could be reduced. A lot of people's could be. With right management, right care, you can reduce that. And that's what our main aim is. Because if you are doing all the right stuff, you will reduce your need on medication. And I see that with my own patients um, time and time again. And the ultimate thing is to get you asymptomatic so you don't have symptoms. Doesn't mean your disease is gone, like endometria. No, it doesn't. But you don't have any symptoms anymore because we've addressed everything properly. So sitting at home isn't going to do it, right? Managing it yourself, you can't. You're not a doctor. You're not a specialist. You're not a surgeon. 
you're not even a pharmacist. Um, you're, you're basically trying to manage your symptoms. And at some stage, you'll have to go and see your doctor anyway to get your pain medication. So you need doctors, right? So we can't damn them. And that's what I'm trying to say. Yes, you've had a bad run. Yes, you've seen some idiots along the way and bad people along the way. But I'll tell you what, there's a lot of good people out there. And that, like myself, we will advocate for you. And again, this is why we set up the experts program. Anyway, I thought I'd come on and explain a little bit like that about that. And again, if anyone does need someone to advocate for them, they can book an appointment with me and they can, you know, call up in my staff and um, I'll find out how I might be able to assist you and um, I'd be happy to help advocate for you. All right, I will talk to you soon. Take care.